Hey all, Pete here. I'm out here doing some preseason coyote scouting. And uh, I wanted to point something out <clears throat> that um, is real important for new coyote trappers to, to look for. Um, I'm kind of running out of videos I can do until I'm actually out trapping. And the point of my videos was to help beginners i'm you know no i don't proclaim to be an expert but i make lots of mistakes and i learned from them and um i don't have a camera person with me so i'm having to hold this myself but one of the things you want to look for is crawl unders and when i say crawl unders i mean places where the coyotes are crawling under the fence and sometimes going through the fence even depending on the kind of fencing if you've got woven farm fence then generally you're gonna find places they're crawling under. If you've got strand barbed wire fence, you'll find places they're going under, but you may also find places they're going through in wide spots between strands that are lower to the ground. And uh, I'm scouting a new property. I'm trapping for a landowner this fall. Got like about six weeks before I start. And uh, I found a, a great spot for a crawl under. I'm gonna have to improve it a little just because the coyotes aren't fenced at all right here. In fact, I may start with a uh, trap in the trail, just a leg hold in dirt where they're coming through and then move to a crawl under uh, as time goes on. And we get more tumbleweeds, all the weeds die and start blowing up against the fence and stuff, but it makes it look a little more natural to fence the coyotes through there. You don't want to try to make them go away that doesn't look natural to them. So if they feel like they're being crowded, they, they'll generally find a different way to go through. And the way you spot these crawl unders is if you can't, um, if you can't tell because of tracks or things like that or trails, then look for coyote hair in the barbs. And this is the most coyote hair I think I've ever seen in a barb in my life, honestly. Um, there's a trail which tells me something's going through there. But we got a lot of rock chucks out here in Idaho. They're they're uh, they're kind of like a prairie dog. I think the technical name is marmot, but we call them rock chucks. And um, and so you're gonna see trails out around these these rocky canyons and stuff that they make. And it's so dry right now, it's hard to to look for sign. Although I can. I think I see a coyote track in the dirt there, but or at least a scuff mark that a coyote probably made. But you look for you look for fur in the barb, and um, and that will tell you where the coyotes are are moving through. And so I'm going to flip my camera around and kind of talk about this. So you see the trail here, and and right here there is a ton of coyote hair right there. I hope I have the camera focused okay. Um, from moving back, you could see the trail coming through. It looks like they may go up through there once in a while, but coyotes are lazy, you know. They're, they're going to go the easiest way generally unless they feel threatened. So what I'll probably do this fall is I'll probably put a leg hold somewhere in this dirt or two there's a set called an O'Gorman Mafia set where you put two traps. I may do that right here, a little walkthrough, blind set, flat set. And then put some weeds, some tumbleweeds in this fence and leave this open right here over the trail so they can keep getting through. And then eventually I'll put a snare right there. This is a great spot. I hope I had the camera angled the way it needed to be, so... But this is something you want to look for. I've, this this is one of three properties owned by the same rancher. No, I'm sorry. It's one of four properties owned by the same rancher. I got some more work to do. Anyway, and, you know, none of them are giant properties. I mean, he owns a few thousand acres, but no, 3,000, I think. I don't know. But they're all, they're all broken up. And so there's fences around them. And you know, every place I've scouted out on this for this guy, I've walked the fence line and I've followed the cattle trails to the fence line because 99 times out of 100, if you follow a trail to a fence, there's going to be a crawl under. 
and I could spend a lot of time putting dirt holes and all kinds of fancy sets that I see on YouTube and stuff or that I read about. And I, I make jokes about some of them. I mean, I know they work for guys. I'm not dissing on the guys at all. They're, they're high, probably better coyote trappers than I am. But, you know, I, I make fun of them by calling them like dragon nipple set or something. Like, because they, they, there's so many words to explain <laughs> these sets. And I was watching, you know, like I've said before, I'm a big fan of Andy Weiser. And, you know, he made a point in his coyote videos. He's like, more coyotes have been caught by dirt holes and flat sets than anything else and it's because they work and this is a perfect spot for a flat set a little walk through flat set on this trail and once they get used to this then i you know i'll probably catch one or two that way and i may grab another one or two coming through that crawl under there once i put a snare there um i have to wait for it to get cold for those snares so the coyote doesn't spoil before i get to him because i only check every 72 hours and and so I like to do leg holds as long as the ground isn't frozen. And so I'll probably put a walk through, but you don't, you know, coyote trapping is, I have discovered it's, it's way more of a chess match than obviously muskrat trapping is, which is my favorite thing to do is trap muskrats. But if, if you've spent your life chasing coyotes around, you know, before I ever trapped coyotes, I, I, I called coyotes and been around coyotes and, you kind of know how they think and you just got to figure out four or five qualities of the coyotes in your area and then you're pretty much set you just got to figure out how you're going to catch them based on those qualities and out here in southern idaho where i'm trapping mainly desert and ranch land you know i if there's a fence i walk it i walk the whole perimeter of the fence i don't care how big the property is if it takes me all day i walk that fence because I'm not going to walk that fence every time I check my traps. I'm going to walk the fence when I'm scouting. And then I'm going to set the hot spots. I'm not going to set that whole giant property. I'm going to set the hottest spots I can find so that I can check traps quickly and that I have a higher chance of catching something. But again, this, this little crawl under right here, I'm going to show it to you one more time. There's a trail. It's, it's golden. What I'll probably do, like I said, is put two traps here. Um, and I'll probably move some rocks around. In fact, I'll probably move some rocks around today before I leave so the coyotes get used to that too. So I can create a little walkthrough where they're going to be walking. And I'll put traps in the ground first. And then once it gets cold, where it's down below freezing at night, I'll go ahead and throw a snare there. So I'll show this to you one more time. There's that bottom strand of barbed wire that's got dead center over the top of that trail. It's full of coyote hair. And I'd be willing to bet there's probably some coyote hair on the ground there too, and there is. So, um, but you can see the trail come through, and I'll probably put a walk through right through here. So I'll give them time to get through the fence, and then boom, hit them. All right, so that's Pete. And uh, take away from the video. Obviously, natural pathways, natural travel ways are always easier. My favorite coyote set is a blind trail set. No urine, nothing. Just a trap in the ground where they're already walking. Fence, a fence crawl under is just kind of one, one step up from that. If you know they're coming through. You can see it. You know they're going to come through right there. And so, put a trap there or a snare. Um, that's it for this video. Remember, God is great. Guns are good. Freedom is precious. Pray for our country as we come into election season. Things just keep getting weirder this year. And um, I don't think we have any good options. So we can pray, though. There are precedents for that, isn't there? So, all right. We'll talk to you later.